First of all, I would like to start from uh, the country where I am from, the Soviet Republic. And I would like to talk to you about the accession of the Soviet Republic to the European Union and the changes it brought to the Soviet legal system. So first of all, in uh, 2004, Slovakia became a member of the European Union. Uh, this wasn't the first step towards uh, the European integration because Slovakia has took many steps before the accession itself to uh, accumulate its standards, the European standards. And uh, uh, positive changes were made to the Soviet Republic's legislation, and it was harmonized with the EU law even, even before this accession. Uh, on the basis of the sine qua non requirement to harmonize the legal system of the Soviet Republic with EU law in order to qualify for accession to the European structures uh, on the hand of the Slovak legislation was harmonized, as I said, with the democratic and economic standards uh, of the Union, and on the other hand, created legal uh, preconditions to <coughs> transfer some of the competencies to the supranational organization. Uh, before the membership itself, the Slovak constitution had to undergo several changes, and a, a huge amendment, which we call the Euro Novella in Slovak, which basically means the novelation of the of the constitution and uh, with this the legal system of the Slovak Republic was prepared for this large change and uh, this huge task actually to harmonize its uh, legislative system with the uh, European law. Um, this amendment was crucial for uh, the Slovak constitution uh, and it was in uh, accordance with the framework and the obligations from EU law. The amendment to the Soviet Constitution took effect on the 1st of May 2004, which means that at the same day uh, as the Soviet Republic became part of the European Union. Uh, the Soviet Republic with this agreed to respect the decisions and the standards that come from the uh, European Union and uh, as a supranational institution and uh, did not only agree to accept the laws that support and do not contradict the Slovak laws, but also uh, within the framework of defi defined areas, and I would like to emphasize this, the European standards become directly effective in national law. Uh, this is a voluntary self-elimination of the powers of the Slovak Republic and the delegation of them to the European Union. A positive sign is the clear, detailed information and distribution of competencies uh, in individual areas between the Union and the member states on the basis of the Lisbon Treaty. And uh, it recognizes most explicitly the need to respect the principles of subsidiarity and proportionality with control vested not only in European authorities, but also in particular, particular in the legislatures of the Slovak Republic. Uh, next up, I would like to bring you closer the approach of the European Union, and especially with regards to the principle of privacy and actually where it comes from. So the principle of privacy is not uh, explicitly defined in the Treaty of the European Union, and not even in the primary law of the European Union, but it has been uh, expressed by the Court of Justice of the European Union. And uh, basically, it stems from the Article 4, uh, Paragraph 3 of the Treaty on the European Union, which says that, pursuant to the principle of civil cooperation, the Union and the Member States shall in full mutual respect assist each other in carrying out tasks which flow from the treaties. The principle of primacy of the European Union law is not found in any provisions of primary law, as I said, but it's an unwritten principle and is confirmed by jurisprudence. On the next slides, we are going to take a look at the most important cases uh, regarding this issue. So the oldest, so the oldest uh, judgment is Van Gendel laws, and uh, it concerns the relationship of the union law with national law, and the Court of Justice in this uh, 
uh, judgment expressed its opinion that uh, uh, the power to pronounce the priority of provisions before national law have excluded with national courts. Later on, uh, in uh, Costa Red Anal, which is probably the most well-known case regarding this issue, uh, it refers to the spirit of the EC Treaty, but also to the objectives of the community. And according to the statement of the Court of Justice, uh, but also to the objectives of the community. And uh, these powers are based on the transfer of powers uh, of the states onto it, as well as based <coughs> on the limitation of some of the powers uh, from the states and for the benefit of the community. And uh, thus, this is creating a legal system that applies to the states themselves, but also on the national. Next up, uh, the Slovakia, uh, the accession of the Slovak Republic to the European Union and the changes it brought. As I've already mentioned, the Euro novella was a huge change to the constitution of the Slovak Republic. Uh, numerous articles were introduced, but also some of them were changed. Uh, for example, the uh, article 1.2 was uh, added into the constitution and it was supposed to help govern the uh, international organization and the national law. Um, uh, it says that the Slovak Republic recognizes and observes the general rules of international law and the international treaties, which by uh, is bound and its other international obligation. While other authors or some authors consider the, 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 this provision to be a fundamental normal reception. Uh, most authors, however, disagree with this view and uh, say that the uh, provision plays a vital role in interpreting other constitutional legal norms and the legal norms of other legal rules. Uh, next up, the Constitution, the Article 7.2 uh, of the Constitution. Many authors refer to this point as some kind of expression or confirmation by the Soviet uh, Republic for the primacy of the European Union. However, if we uh, read this article closer, we can see that it uh, differs quite much, and I will uh, elaborate on this issue a little bit later. Uh, next up, uh, the Constitutional Court accepts the doctrine of privacy <coughs> and all public authorities uh, together with the general courts however, uh, are obliged to apply the principle of primacy of EU law in a way that established by the case law of the Court of Justice, which means that in the event of conflict uh, between the rules of, this, of, the, of these two uh, legal orders, the national legislation became inapplicable. However, the case law of the Constitution, of course, has not yet uh, commented on the question whether uh, EU law is absolute in nature or it also takes whether it is absolute in nature, that means that if it also takes precedence over the uh, constitution and the constitutional law. And actually the only uh, decision from the constitutional court of the Soviet Republic is the decision from 2011. And in it, the constitutional court declares the privacy of EU law and expresses that any national law that is contrary to EU law shall not be applied, or in other words, any law must be in accordance with EU law in order to be applied. We must distinguish here uh, between law and uh, constitutional law. So it's not the same, and this can be viewed as an error control approach. Uh, so therefore we can say that still ne nearly after uh, 20 years of the Euro novella, the articles in the Constitution uh, can sound incomplete or not specific enough. Uh, the constitutional language still lacks a declaration that international legal principles are uh, from part of the Soviet national system. And uh, uh, as a part of the constitutional revision, a new paragraph to, to Article 1 has been introduced under which the Slovak Republic recognizes and observes the general norms of international law, international treaties to which it is committed and East, uh, other international commit commitments. However, some scholars believe that uh, this clause may be regarded as a fundamental receptive norm, 
And uh, this interpre interpretation is questionable because Article 1.2 doesn't declare international law norms to be part of the Soviet uh, legal order. And as uh, we will uh, further conclude that the Constitution only guarantees primacy over national law as a means of fulfilling obligations arising from international law to certain groups of uh, international treaties. <coughs> Concluding remarks and Delegate uh, Ferenda. In this part, I would like to emphasize that in the context of general assessment of the Slovak Republic's constitution from the standpoint of the Slovak Republic's membership in the European Union, uh, it can be stated that the constitution, in principle, does not impose any obstacles to membership in this uh, supranational grouping and creates preconditions for, for the select republic's supplement of obligations arising from this membership. Uh, of course, this conclusion doesn't imply that the constitutional control of the matter is perfect. Uh, I have identified a few theoretical issues, such as the directive from national judge uh, arising from Article 144 and uh, point two of the Constitution, the conflict of a generally binding legislative provision with primary union law to suspend the proceedings and refer to the matter to the Constitutional Court for the invitation of proceedings on the compatibility of the legislation, which could be considered a uh, constitutional duty to be in conflict with the uh, similar uh, principle. And the possible constitutional amendment that maybe could be introduced could uh, also include a modification of the National Council's uh, ability to bring an action before the Court of Justice for the enumerment of an Union Act on the grounds of violation of this principle of subsidiarity, and the government could maybe uh, be uh, bound by such a decision of the National Court, of the National Council. Thank you for your attention.